Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and today's video is going to deal with the air distribution system here in the Tin Barn. Uh, about seven, eight months ago I had to replace my 60 gallon air compressor. Uh, I replaced it with a new one and I decided at the time it was a good time to go ahead and try to replumb correctly the air distribution system here in, here in the Tin Barn. Um, I used the, uh, the half inch in, uh, half inch rapid air uh, plumbing system, uh, piping, fittings, uh, blocks, and so forth. I've got, uh, I'll insert a few pictures here of the uh, installation. It's basically a, the compressor sets outside under the shelter. Uh, I have a hose or I have a rapid air block that connects it into the uh, tin barn. It's plumbed over and then there are, let's see, one, two, three, four drops uh, in here. Uh, each drop has uh, at least one quick disconnect on it. Uh, some of them have two. Uh, and they also have a drain. I did, at the time I was plumbing this, <coughs> excuse me, on the compressor, bottom of the compressor itself, I put a gate valve on it, ball valve, that's easily accessible. And every day, every time I come out here to the barn, uh, I turn power onto the compressor and drain it, uh, drain for any moisture in there. So I feel like uh, I'm doing all I can to make this one last another 20, 25, 30 years like the former compressor did. But what we want to do today, I need to put another drop in. And uh, as you saw in those pictures, the blocks at the end of each drop uh, have are uh, threaded for a quick disconnect and a drain. And though they're about $30 a piece, $30 plus a piece, kind of expensive. But I think what we're going to do today, I'm going to take this piece of uh, aluminum stock here. This is one inch by two and a half inch. I'm going to cut about a three inch block off of this. We're going to drill and tap it for, I've got a couple of extra of these uh, uh, rapid air connectors. We'll put one in each side and then we'll put a uh, 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 thread it for a quick disconnect. I probably will not put a drain in this. As I drain the compressor, as I said, I drain the compressor every time I come out here anyhow. So I don't think there'll be a need for a, a drain on this one. This block is going to be in between two other blocks. Uh, I've added a new workbench over in a section of the tin barn. I'll show you later in this video that uh, I've got my grandson out here. We got it cleaned out uh, and got it usable. And I've got a workbench in there, and I want an airdrop right over it uh, so I can put one of the retractable hoses on it. So let's go over to the saw first and uh, cut us about a three-inch piece off of this, off of this uh, bar stock. Okay, we'll come over to the Wilton vise and mount our piece. You know, I've got a vertical bandsaw over here, horizontal bandsaw over here. But my go-to bandsaw is this Harbor Freight portable one. This might be the best thing I ever bought from Harbor Freight. Let's go over to the mill now. Uh, this has got a saw edge, saw end on both ends. We'll clean that up and start setting up to drill our holes. Okay, I'm turning around to the mill now. We'll put our block in. Of course, secure it down good. And just going to mill off these ends. I'm not looking for a particular 
exact nominal length or anything, just as long as I got each end cleaned up good. Didn't quite do it, so we'll do another pass. All right, that was conventional milling. I'm gonna move over about three or four thousandths climb mill just to give us a good clean finish on that end. I'm gonna deburr those edges right quick. I'll clean the whole piece up after uh, I get it all milled, but I just wanted to clean some edges there to make it go in the vise good or seat in the vise good. Now just a climb milling pass to clean that up. All right, I'm going to deburr this piece all the way around, get it cleaned up good. Then we're going to set up to drill and tap. We're going to drill all the way through on the uh, through the side. Get this up, show you what I'm talking about. We're going to drill all the way through and mount one of these quick uh, uh, slip-on connectors on each side. Then we'll drill a hole from the bottom up and drill and tap it for a uh, quarter inch NPT. This will be 3 eighths NPT. It's got the PCD bird and I went ahead and marked the spot off which is half the width and uh, about 0.8 inches down from the top. That looked like just a a good point to a uh, good place to put this starting point or this drill point. So what I'm going to do is just use a pointer. I punch that hole and I'm just simply going to use a pointer. That will be plenty close enough for what we're doing here. I will lock the X and Y down, and I've got the block even with this back jaw right here. So when I turn it over to thread the other side, I should be lined up then as well. So we're going to start out drilling a quarter inch pilot hole. I may have said this was half inch NPT before, but it's three eighths NPT, and the tap drill for 3 8 NPT is a 37 64 so it's a fair you know pretty good size bit so we're gonna we're gonna drill a lead hole first Run out of quill space, but go down a little bit. Just that much. All right, now we'll put our 3764 bit in. You know, it's hard to make yourself back off when something's drilling so good. But if you don't, you got them long stringy chips that are hard to clean up and are somewhat dangerous as well.
Now, I wish my tap had a uh, a hole in that end, so I, or a center in that end, so I could be sure I was starting it straight. But since it doesn't, I'm just going to try to come down with the drill chuck, hold it down. I had to go a little bit oversize. I looked, I didn't have a 3764, so I had to go just a little over. But I drilled a test or I tapped a test piece. And I think I got a pretty good idea of how deep I need to run this taper tap. All right, I feel certain it started as straight as it's going to going to go. All right, I'm going to stop it there and test fit our connector in. All right, we'll put a little Teflon tape on that before we tighten it down for, for sure. So let's flip it over now. Keeping right with the same edge right here, we should be lined up. Okay, since everything's set up, I went over there and got one of my counter bores, counter sinks. We'll clean this, just clean this edge up. I'm just keeping hand pressure on the uh, down feed on the quill just until I know that started in there straight. All right, had a little burr at the top up there, but that's good now. Now we want to turn it up and for our half inch NPT, I'm sorry, our quarter inch NPT for the quick disconnect, we're going to drill and tap from the bottom and again we're just going to line up. Uh, just by a little point that I've made in here. A little punch mark. And we're going to drill this down until it breaks through into the hole we drilled on the other axis. The uh, tap drill for a quarter inch MPT is 7 sixteenths. All right, this quarter inch MPT, old Vermont American I have here, actually has a center in it, so I'll get the uh, tap guide. And again, that will just, this is spring loaded, that will just help keep it straight to get it started. All right, and I do not remember how far on the tap I should go since this is tapered. I don't want to go too far in it bottom out so 
It's much easier to back out and try it a couple times than it is to get it too far to start with. Now that I'm looking, I think I'm seeing a mark on the tap from the last time I used this for the depth. And if that's what I'm seeing, that's about to it. Yep, that's a good start in there. Okay. We're not quite done over here yet. What I want to do is put a couple mounting holes in here that will not interfere with the, of course, the pass-through hole. So I'm going to mark off a couple spots up here on the corners and then we'll drill a couple holes for uh, uh, drywall screws. All right, I laid out a couple of holes, being careful, of course, not to get into our, our pass-through and threaded holes. But I'll be using these drywall screws, about an inch and a half drywall screws. A 964 so is a good uh, clearance drill for these. I did set my zero, I zeroed out my DRO at that point so I can come back to it to do the counter boring on. Well, I didn't have it seated, didn't have it very tied in the vise. I see what it was, there's a little burr right there. And when that burr gave out, the grip gave out. Okay. Now we'll put a little countersink in, just so that head sets flush. I may have to clear that out on the, clear that burr out over on the bench. All right, I'm gonna step over to the belt sander, belt grinder and just polish this up a little bit on all sides, remove any of the burrs. Then we'll go back to the workbench and we'll actually assemble the uh, connector to this and get it ready to mount. All right, now we're ready to assemble. Got some of my Teflon tape. And I'm gonna put it on this uh, one of the 3 8 fittings. And I won't use quite as much as our friend over in England, John Mills, does, but I think it'll be enough to hold it. Do the same thing to the other side. All right, and for our Quick connect. We'll wrap both ends of the uh, nipple, being mindful of the thread direction. By doing it like this, we're tightening, tightening both joints all at the same time. All right, so there we have it. This probably for now is gonna get one of these uh, slinky type uh, air hoses, but I do plan 
to get a retractable air hose uh, in the near future. So let's go over to the other side of the tin barn and I'll go give you a quick show of that and we'll mount this. Okay, I've got you over in a section of the tin barn that you hadn't, I don't think I've ever shown on video before. This is a, a 16 by 24 section uh, that still has a uh, gravel floor in it. This doorway right here leads into the uh, to the original part, original shop area of the tin barn, and from there right on into the section I enclosed a couple years ago. But I tried, I got my grandson out here with me a few weeks ago, and we cleaned out this side as much as we could. Uh, it had turned into a an area where we just simply threw stuff, uh, no organization. It was uh, really wasted space, but we got out here and cleaned it out. And I tried to move some of the dirty stuff, if you will, over here. This is a uh, four by 36 uh, Hammond uh, vertical belt grinder. Uh, very dusty when it's in use. Uh, that's my little uh, powder coating uh, box there. Beyond that is one of the uh, little cheap uh, skill drill presses from, Har uh, from uh, Lowe's. Above that you see the grinder rack that I uh, did several videos back. Uh, just beyond the drill press on the workbench is a 4x36 horizontal belt grinder. And the red and black on the other side of that is the 2x72 uh, belt grinder. Again, these, all these belt sanders and belt grinders, very dirty and dusty. So I tried to get them out here. You can see sitting near the ground beyond that, my old uh, Lincoln buzz box. Lincoln 225 uh, welder. And around that corner is the stairway to the uh, uh, second floor to the tin barn. And there's also a doorway in there leading to, uh, uh, to the original shop area as well. Uh, you, I don't know whether you can make it out in the video, but beyond this plywood workbench and the uh, double swinging doors over there is a uh, four foot by four foot uh, metal welding table. Uh, it has three eighths inch uh, thick solid top to it made out of six inch channel iron. Very, very heavy. In the center here is a just a four bay workbench. Uh, I don't think you can see everything, but uh, right in front of the camera, of course, is a uh, little arbor press. There is uh, my version of a radial drill press. Uh, works very well when you need a long reach. Uh, hidden behind that is a uh, bench grinder, uh, and beyond that is a bench buffer. Now in that corner back there, that red tank is the, uh, the remains of my compressor that went bad. I've got a friend that wanted me to save the tank for him uh, to make a smoker out of, and there's some uh, boxes. It's kind of some junk in that corner right there as well. Coming on around, the uh, yellow and plywood is a scaffolding system. A um, few yard tools. This is a louvered fan. When it powers up, louvers open up automatically as an exhaust fan for the welder. Garden cart, a uh, pressure washer, uh, just another uh, cart. Now you're getting back to the part of the back side over here where a lot of the junk when we cleaned up got thrown in. But uh, just miscellaneous stuff you have around your shop. Right here is a toaster oven for the small uh, powder coating jobs, and then a full-scale kitchen stove underneath that, uh, wired out here for the larger uh, uh, powder coating jobs. Then just plumbing, plumbing parts, screws, nuts, bolts, uh, paper towels, all those kind of things. So this is the section of the barn, uh, tin barn that I've just started using. And one of my airdrops, you can see on this post, you see the blue line coming down that post. That's one of the airdrops. And it comes across the ceiling up here. And right there above that, or between that stove cable and the light fixture, is where I want to put a drop, which will be right above 
this new workbench. So I'm going to attempt to climb up there on that workbench, put that in place. Uh, I'm going to leave the camera running. So if I fall and hurt myself, uh, uh, maybe poop folks at the hospital will know what stupid stunt I was trying to pull. But here we go. I have released the air pressure on the uh, on the system now. Okay. I think I want to put it right in this area. With those rapid air kits, you get a little tool that uh, to work for for cutting your tubing. Works very well. And I need to take out about a 40 inch section. Let me get that right now. No, I need to. The overall distance between these two is four inches, but I know the tubing will go in here an inch, so I only need to take out, I only need to take out about a two and a half inch section, that's four and a half, I'm sorry. I'm going to start with a two inch section, and then if I need to cut more, I can. About another half inch, I think, there. half inch might have been a quarter inch too much. I'm going to step down, go to this end down here. I can get a little slack back over there because I don't think that hooked. I don't know. It may have. We'll put some pressure on it in a second and see if it blows out. And of course, I forgot my screwdriver. Let's hope everything is well. We'll hook the airline up. Go out and put air pressure on. And you guys will know before I do if it leaks. Okay, it seems to be holding.
Okay, folks, I think that's going to conclude this video. Uh, again, it was a couple hours of my time, and if I counted my time worth anything, I'd probably have been better off to have gone and bought a block. But uh, learning experience on uh, tapping uh, NPT threads, and also I get to say I made it myself. So y'all take care, and I'll see you on the next video.